Hallelujah. God told us in advance things that's going to come. So we're going to talk about apocalyptic events. Say praise the Lord. Let's worship God one more time. Hallelujah. 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 <coughs> to God be the glory, great things he has done. We magnify and worship you, God, today. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for standing. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. <coughs> okay, so apocalyptic events. Amen. The subject tonight of what we're going to be discussing. And much of what I'm going to be sharing with you is coming from what we might call secular society. Amen. Okay? Um, science programs. That you can watch, you can go to the internet, you can look up information on the internet, some of these things. Um, a, lot, a lot of things that are coming from the world. Amen. And amen. what the world thinks may happen soon to our earth. So what I'm sharing with you, much of it is not even coming from the church, it's coming from the world. About apocalyptic events, what is this world coming to? What's going to happen uh, to our world, and so let's see uh, what is the name of that program. Um, anyway, it'll come to me in a minute. So we're going to go through some things here tonight. I'm going to go fast at the very beginning, and we're going to talk about apocalyptic, uh, the unexplained. Recently, put on a program about apocalyptic events. And there's a lot of different uh, programs that are coming up with similar things. There are movies that are coming out right now that are talking about apocalyptic, apocalyptic events that are coming, are going to come upon the earth. So anyway, the world is preaching really loud about what may happen to this planet. There is, first of all, a asteroid which was called Apophis. And Apophis was detected. It was a near near earth asteroid more than 1000 feet in size, 300 meters or basically three football fields in size. And it was headed to our earth. Scientists saw this and and this was discovered in 2004 and they got extremely concerned because they said that there was a, about a 3% chance, 2.7% possibility of this asteroid impacting the earth. And they dated it 2029, Friday the 13th, as the impact time uh, of this asteroid hitting the earth. They said that it would be such a massive impact that it would become an extinction event. That whenever it hit the earth, it would be a hundred times stronger than any bomb that has ever been created. And that it would, it would literally, an extinction event that would cause the whole earth to go into extinction and everything on it. That is how powerful this asteroid, if it hit the earth, would have the impact what it would have done. It would have put everything in extinction. They believed it would happen in 2029. Uh, again, a hundred times stronger than any bomb that has ever been created. And you talk about the earth, 8,000 uh, miles width, be wiped out by this particular asteroid. And they were really concerned about it because evidently they never discovered an asteroid with about a 3% possibility of impacting this earth. So scientists were really concerned about that, okay? Um, but then they later changed it as they studied it a little bit further. In March 2021, 20, they said it was less than one and 380,000 uh, thousandths of a chance that would hit the earth. The point is, though, if that one asteroid uh, possibly would hit the earth, what about others? When you go through the Word of God, you see things like that, impacts that are going to hit the earth in the future. The book of Revelation talks about a star called Wormwood. It's probably an asteroid or, or something like that that's going to hit the earth and it's going to cause the waters to become bitter. 
Okay? So we know by the Bible that these type of events are going to happen in the future. Uh, the fact that they were really concerned about it, though, caused a big stir in the science community. Okay? So there's a constant effort by scientists right now. They're constantly tracking asteroids in the skies and determining whether or not they're in a path to hit this earth. I shared with you when we talked about God, the doctrine of God, that the Jupiter, the planet Jupiter, was placed in the heavens to be like a big vacuum cleaner. And it actually is there set in the heavens by God to be a shield or to be a vacuum cleaner to these asteroids, etc. So God has a vacuum cleaner set in place. But we know by the Bible that in the future that there will be these massive asteroids, whatever, uh, that will hit the earth in the future, okay? So that is one possibility of extinction upon the earth. Amen? Next one, super volcanoes. <coughs> May the 3rd, 2018, uh, a volcano called Kilauea. Kilauea. Kilauea is out in the middle of the ocean. But Kilauea began as a super volcano and it began to erupt and magnum of 2,000 degrees began to flow into Hawaii. And, and they say, scientists say, that it's the most active volcano right now that we have upon the earth. When you think about super volcanoes, their power, they're not only a hundred times stronger like an asteroid than a bomb. They're a thousand times stronger than any nuclear weapon that has ever been created by man. A thousand times stronger. Super volcano. So Kilauea is a super volcano. It went off. There are about 20 of them throughout the earth. And when you look on a map and you look for super volcanoes on the map of the earth, there are four super volcanoes in the United States of America. Most of them are toward California. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Got one little bit over there close to New Mexico. If you got family over there, tell them to pray through. You got people in California, you need to call them and tell them to get ready. Jesus is coming. And they got, but they got, we got, you can look on the map. The super volcanoes are right there, you know, in that part. And they're all four of them. They're in that, basically that, that part of the United States of America. And, and when I say uh, super volcanoes, they're actually active. About 12 to 20 of them. So a thousand times stronger than a nuclear weapon. When scientists look at these super volcanoes, they say it is possible for one of these super volcanoes to go off and cause the whole earth to go into extinction. And literally you've got 12 to 20 of them that are active right now. Okay? Are you understanding that? Now the Bible talks about the sun will be darkened. Uh, the sun won't give its light. There are many t I've, I've read a lot of different books in, about prophecy. And a lot of scholars look at that and they say it could be uh, an explosion of a volcano because when that soot goes up and the gas goes up into the air, uh, literally it captures sunlight and it poisons everything around, you know, the poisonous gases. So it'll block the sun in the daytime. It'll create a what some people call a nuclear winter. So it's a very serious problem. And we look in the Word of God and we see very interesting things that talk about the sun becoming dark you know, blotted out, etc. Very good possibility that these super volcanoes are going to begin to erupt, that you'll see more of them begin to erupt, and if one goes really, really off, you know, in a severe way, it could bring about the extinction of the planet. Okay? Black holes. <coughs> Another possibility is black holes. April the 10th, 2019, the first image is captured uh, of a big black hole. So you can look it up. At that date, April 10, 2019, the image of a big black hole, and you'll see there's an image. It's just a dark space up there in space that's surrounded by, you know, other things, but it's a dark space. In, in First time it's ever been captured. So scientists have speculated that black holes existed, uh, you know, they're very interesting. It is believed that they are created by the imploding of a star. So the star implodes upon itself, etc. And what causes that to happen is a star begins to use about 50% of its energy. 
when it uses up to about 50% of its energy, that's when it begins to put, go into a place, a supernova or whatever. It can implode or explode. And when it does, it creates what is called a black hole. And the gravitational pull of that black hole is so strong that light itself cannot escape. So next point. Gravity is so strong, light cannot escape. Uh, are you with me now? That's kind of hard to see. But that image that was captured is in the galaxy N87. It's a black hole. It's 25 billion miles across. It's a very large uh, black hole. So the gravitational pull of the black hole is so strong that light can't even escape. If the earth were to, were to be sucked into that black hole, and it could be, you know, the size of the earth in comparison to 25 billion miles across, very easily could be sucked into a black hole. And I've studied these through, through time in the past, and scientists say that if the earth were to go into a black hole, the gravitational force is so strong that the earth would be collapsed down to the size of a basketball, but yet weigh the same. Scientists also say that black holes are lakes of fire. Okay? Now, what is interesting in that is that if the earth, uh, the closest one is 1,500 light years away, it's a little bit blurry there, but 1,500 light years away. So, I mean, that's a pretty far away, right? You know, the Bible talks about the heavens and the earth are going to pass away. God's going to create a new heavens and a new earth, and the heavens and the earth are going to pass away. It's going to melt with fervent heat. I believe that word literally means a re restoration of this current earth. But scientists are saying it's possible that these black holes, the earth could get in the path of a black hole, and that black hole could suck the earth in to it. And so they are concerned about an apocalyptic event in relationship to black holes. All right? Jesus talked about the lake of fire. The lake of fire could be the black hole. And he says it's a, a place of darkness and a place of, place of fire. Black holes are very... Uh, scientifically related to what Jesus said. Okay? Aliens. Next possible cause for an apocalyptic event. A lot of people today are really caught up into aliens. I'm not going to get into speculation, but I'm going to tell you what the Pentagon, Pentagon said. June the 25th, 2021, the Pentagon, Pentagon report, UAP does exist. So that was recently. They said that UAP does exist, does exist, unidentified aerial phenomenon, does exist. They looked at 143 of 144 sightings, and they could not explain 143 sightings. So they came to the conclusion in the Pentagon report that UAP is, it does exist. Now, they put cameras on F-18s, and F-18s captured some of these objects moving through space. Some of them were called Tic Tacs. I don't know if you've seen those images or not, but they called them Tic Tacs, little round uh, things. And these pilots captured that. It blew their mind. They didn't know what they were seeing. And, and those um, UAP, they'd be moving at a certain speed, and those pilots could monitor basically how fast they would go, but then they would move very, very fast from one point to another, and it just defied, really, laws. Uh, and so they're trying to figure out, <coughs> you know, where they're coming from, what they are, how can they move like that, because when they study them, it doesn't look like there's anything, any propulsion, it doesn't look like anything's pushing them, it just looks like they're floating in air, you know. Interesting, there have been scientists that have been working on anti-gravity, the concept of anti-gravity craft, which means somehow they could shield the craft from the gravitational pull, and so that craft can just move through the sky without any hindrance by gravity. So maybe some of what is being seen, the speed of these craft, etc., cetera, are, are uh, anti gravity type of craft. Now, are they aliens from another planet? I don't know. I will, I will say I don't know because we don't have DNA yet. 
until somebody provides DNA, actual DNA of an alien, it's in question. If it's not aliens from another planet, and uh, I believe it's the Guardian, I don't have the documentation with me, but the Guardian says there's over 20 planets out there that can sustain life, and that life can monitor and be observing people on the earth. So there are planets out there they've already discovered that can maintain life. That's what they say, okay? The point being is, if it's not aliens from another planet, if it's not the Nephilim or whatever, I'm not going to get into all of that. It could be the United States of America or other countries that are doing top secret, uh, you know, testing of craft, of, of building of crafts, but they're not telling us about them. Okay, so, you know, I'm not going to jump to the conclusion these are aliens from another planet. But there's a lot of movies that are being uh, made right now about alien invasion. And many of those movies showing you that when aliens, if they do invade, that they're going to attack men. And so that's why scientists and other people are concerned about aliens. Are they going to, you know, come to the earth and wipe out the human race? <coughs> okay. There is a movie that you might be interested in watching. It's called The The Quiet Place. And it shows these aliens, you know, coming from outer space and eventually uh, they attack human beings, okay? Begin to wipe them out. It's a clean movie. Uh, it's based in what people think about aliens, okay? Now, the first one was really good. It was better than the second one. We watched the second one. The second one shows you where they came from. But anyway, that's beside the point. Okay? You know, if I'm not careful, I think it's real. I'm sitting there and I'm watching. You know, get that the gun, Mom. <laughs> you know what I mean? Shh, shh. Don't say nothing. Right? Y'all okay? Y'all don't ever get into it like that, do you? No, okay. Praise the Lord. Anyway, it's sort of, I don't know, to me it's a little bit funny, but we don't know. We'll see. Uh, but they're looking into it, and again, this is interesting because they're finally admitting, June the 25th, 2021, 20, uh, this report that UAP, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena, does exist. Okay? Could be a cover-up, though, from our government. Now, Brother Tim Cohen's an expert on all that, and I'll let him work through all of that and Deal with all of that and come to conclusions. He's, he's really smart about a lot of this stuff, okay? <coughs> he believes it in aliens, as far as I know. But they're not what they make, they're making them out to be, okay? So I won't go any further than that. Next thing we'll talk about is stimulation. Now, this is the craziest one. This idea that at some point the human race is going to become extinct because we're all in a simulator. We're all in a video game, okay? And that there's somebody out there that has created a big old computer graphic. And everything you see, except Brother Timothy, he's real. But everything you see, is it's not really real. It's all fake, Okay, and it's created by an advanced civilization, and you're actually just walking around uh, in an imaginary, simulated, created computer graphics world. If you don't know that, <laughs> Hallelujah! Are y'all with me? And that's going to cause some of you to look at your family members and wonder: Are you real or not? But anyway. That's crazy, isn't it? There's some kind of super civilization that has created everything around you that's not even real, and you're in a computer world. Now, the question is, if that's true, and we know it's not, but if that is true, all they got to do is turn the switch off, and you go extinct. But see, people that don't know God... <coughs> don't know where everything came from and don't know where everything's going, trying to figure out, okay? Uh, computer graphics in Tokyo, Japan, 
Scientists using a K supercomputer built a simulated Tokyo, then destroyed it by an earthquake. So they actually created, I mean, in great detail. When you look at it, it's great detail. And then after they created it with great detail, then they sent an earthquake and they wiped Tokyo completely out. And, they, and you can see people escaping through different routes as the earthquake hit Tokyo. So it allowed them to see what would be the quickest or the best way to escape uh, through simulation. And it was done through that supercomputer, Right? Are we living in a video game? Some people here tonight are. Which everything is fake and advanced. And advanced civilization is running everything. Now we know that God is in control of everything. That God is running everything. And that we are his subjects. And that we answer to God. He is, you know, hallelujah, king of kings and lord of lords. So it's not, it's not simulated. It's real. Okay. Virtual reality. Say virtual reality. It's something that appears almost like it's real, but it's not. It's, it's a made-up reality. And we're going to talk about metaverse tonight. Okay? Very interesting. Right now, metaverse is available. How many of y'all ever heard of metaverse? Okay. Take it real slow. Metaverse is the new name for Facebook. And metaverse, are y'all understanding? This is important. Metaverse is a plan by Mark Zuckerberg. His company wants to create a metaverse. And we're going to explain that to you. It's virtual reality. The difference is it's a digital reality. And the difference is that you will be able to create an avatar of yourself and you'll be able to go into this unreal, non-real world and you'll be able to interact with people in that digital world, okay? You'll be able to tele, uh, teleportation. You'll be able to move as an avatar, although you're here in that metaverse, you'll be able to move in that avatar from one place to another. You'll even be able to go back in time, like to ancient Rome, and watch ancient Rome be built, etc. Okay? And the way you do that, the way you go into this virtual reality or this metaverse is you put on these glasses. And when you when you put those glasses on, then you can go to these different places and interact with different people. And your avatar, representation of you, is actually involved in there in the, um, in the actual metaverse, okay? Everybody kind of understand that? Somewhat? Okay, let's talk about it. Meta in Greek... Whoops, max space. Okay. Metaverse. All right. I spent about an hour and a half listening to Mark Zuckerberg, his presentation, his video on metaverse. And he talks about, he uses words that you want to listen to very carefully. He talks about imagine. He talks about creating. You understand? He talks about avatars. He talks about teleportation. It's really interesting. The word meta, where did he come up with this word metaverse? The Greek word meta means beyond. Beyond. It also is, means to change or to transcend. So what is the desire? What are they seeking to transcend over? They're seeking to go above this universe. With a, with a virtual reality universe. So to go beyond, to change, to transcend. The Latins took the Greek word and Latinized the meaning, and it means a plane, or it means to be a, or above the universe. Okay? With me here? All right? So in that um, digital world, this 
a world where you can go into by those glasses. You've created your avatar, and we'll explain that in a minute. When you go there, you can actually uh, have teleportation. So you're moving from one place to another. Even though you're not physically there, your avatar's there. The representation of you is there. Okay, we'll get more into this as we go along here and talk about uh, the implications of it. Now, avatars, what are avatars? So when Mark Zuckerberg is talking about an avatar, you'll see in his presentation um, representation of, of different people, okay? And, um, but an avatar, it's interesting, the, the term that's being used, because av- avatar originally is connected to, it means to descend. So what he says is that you're going to make your own Im- avatar. You're going to become an avatar. And that means descending. It uh, goes back originally, an avatar was the fallen ones. An avatar, if you will, are the gods that came down and walked among men upon the earth. And when we talk about the gods coming down and walking among men upon the earth, we're talking about Genesis 6. The sons of God came down to the daughters of men, cohabitated with them, and they created giants, a hybrid of demonic and human in one person. You understand that? So the gods that came down, when the Bible talks about false gods, it's talking about fallen spirits or demonic spirits. That is what an avatar is. It's the fallen ones, the ones that have descended, that come down here and intermingle with humanity. So when you create an avatar, then what you're doing is you are embodying yourself into your own God. It means also to embody and to exalt. Okay? To embody and to exalt. It's a representation of the person graphically. The Cambridge Dictionary, an image of yourself you create to represent yourself, animal or otherwise. All right? So that first one, speaking of descent, is uh, one dictionary I have. I think it's Webster. The second one, or this Cambridge one, the image of this is important. The image of yourself to create, represent yourself as an animal or otherwise. So when you create an avatar, you create your own identity. That means if you want to be transgender, then you create yourself as transgender in this virtual reality. You can make yourself, create yourself, not God, but you become God, and you create your own self to be what you want you to be. Whether it's an animal, whether it's transgender, whether if you're a man, you can make yourself a woman. If you're a woman, you can make yourself a man. And you can literally lose your identity completely in this virtual reality by what is called the avatar. Okay. Artificial intelligence. So what ultimately is, they want to steal your identity as a human being, as a person, and they want to somewhat create a humanoid, you know, a, a robot slash human together. And that's what it is when you go into that virtual reality, you're creating a representation of yourself. It's not really you. You understand that? Uh, it's related to artificial intelligence. Now, have you noticed? I don't have it. This is an HP. But there's some computers that have a half bitten apple on the back of them. What is a half bitten apple? What does that mean? You ever thought about it? You ever looked at it and you go, wow, what is that half bitten apple? What is that? It's connected to computer, correct? What it is is man saying, leave the garden and move to artificial intelligence. Okay? 
That's why there's an apple, half bitten apple on that, that, those type. So leave the garden to artificial intelligence. Meta, the new name for Facebook, he says is about connectivity. It's all about connecting with each other, right? But the man that helped Mark Zuckerberg create Facebook, his name is Palpati. I think I'm probably mispronouncing his name, Palpatia, but hard name to pronounce. He helped Mark Zuckerberg create Facebook. And he himself warns against the use of Facebook. He says it's creating a disconnection instead of a connection. Social media. Now, we talked a little bit about this this morning. When you, okay, I text, you text. I'm not against technology. The problem is, is technology your master or are you the master of the technology? Technology is not moral and it's not immoral. It's what you do with it. So when I talk about technology, I'm not against technology but it will be used in a sinister way. Amen? And so anyway, so the people that actually created Facebook, one of them, he doesn't let his own children use Facebook. And he doesn't use Facebook. Because instead of making a connection, <coughs> it's actually causing a disconnection. Okay, instead of you becoming more social, you're less social because you're using your technology so much. And I shared with the church this morning that oftentimes when I see people come to church and they're zoning, man, you know, they're in a totally different world. You can preach the word of God to them. Man, the move of God is so powerful. It's there, but they're still zoning in their own world, okay? Why is that? Because they spend so much time disconnected by what is called connectivity. So they get this look on their face. It's almost like a zombie look. And boy, I've looked at that for a long time. And I thought to myself, where is this coming from? Why the young people that I preach to or the youth leaders preach to, why do they seem to be disconnected? Why do they seem to be out there in space somewhere? One person said this, not the uh, co-builder of Facebook. He made a statement. He's not even a Christian as far as I know, not a pastor. He said, we're quickly getting to a place now because of texting and these gadgets that we have that people will want not even know how to shake anybody's hand anymore. They won't be able to look you in the eye. They won't be able to shake your hand. They won't be able to interact with you because they won't even know how to interact on a personal level because they're so disconnected by the gadgets. And so it's affecting whether you want to admit it or not. People in the world are saying that social media is dangerous for the mind. And the, the one that helped Zuckerberg uh, create that technology of Facebook he said what it is, it's a dopamine trip. Okay? It makes you feel good. You know, it's not a personal relationship, but for, for whatever, you know, the emojis and the things that you text out and send or whatever, it's supposed to create a dopamine effect. And, and that's why people like it, because it makes them feel good. Okay? But instead of connectivity, it's a disconnect. And I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, as a pastor, I'm extremely concerned. And I'm not talking, I'm not preaching to people outside of this church. I'm, I'm preaching to you. Okay? I don't have Facebook. I don't have social media. I don't spend time on that, on that trash. I'm just going to say it like it is to me. It's trash. And again, technology is not immoral or moral. You use the technology. Use it for the proper reasons, okay, if it's possible. But the problem is it's so corrupted and it's so messed up that when you try to use it in a, in a moral, proper way, you end up getting stuff you don't want to get, influences you don't want to in, have, influences in your life. Are you understanding? 
And so the people that actually build that technology is saying it's very bad. And they're very concerned about how it's affecting our young people. And as your pastor, I'm not just concerned about the young people. I'm concerned about all of us. How much of this, you know, so-called connectivity through the gadgets, the texting, and all of that, it's really disconnectivity. It's doing something to our brains. And Brother Timothy shared with me earlier this morning when I told him a little bit of what I was going to do. He said, yeah, we watched something. He said, we watched something. My family watched something about this very thing, Pastor, and how it messes with the brain. Oh, okay, you with me? Hallelujah. I always say this, okay? I'm not telling you to not text. I'm not telling you not to whatever, whatever. I'm not going there. But you have to be limited in how much you give yourself to the gadgets. Okay? Smart people that are not even in the church don't give their time much to gadgets. They don't do a lot of texting. They don't do a lot of social media and that kind of stuff. Okay? Because they know it's dangerous. So now they're going to step it up another, to another level. Okay? Well, you're not just going to be outside of technology. You're actually going to enter into technology. You're going to be there yourself in digital space. You're going to be handling digital objects with your hand. Okay? Wow. You're going to create a totally different reality for yourself. And the devil loves that. Because the devil wants you to have your own logic. He wants you to, you know, go into a place that's not real in your imagination and work in your imagination to get you to a place where you live in your own reality and your own logic that you've created for yourself. So that the way you take in things is the way you interpret them. The way your logic says they should be processed. And that's dangerous. Because this is what should be governing your mind. This, was she, this is, should be the reality. Not your own logic of your own reality on your own world. Where the enemy is constantly coming in that mind. And, and, and messing with that reality of your mind. And creating your own logic. That's the problem. The word of God is the one that sets our reality. So you watch, you watch, not just in the church, but you go out there in the world. And you see people in the store, and they're pushing their baskets, and they're like zombies. They're disconnected in a world of connectivity. Don't even know how to interact. Don't even know how to talk. Don't even know how to say hello. Don't even know how to shake the hand. Don't even know how to look people in the eyes. You parents, have you ever noticed your young people? They're off in their own little worlds. <coughs> and sometimes, maybe you walk by them, they don't say anything to you. Or they walk by you, they don't say anything to you. What's going on there? They've disconnected. Okay? This art, so this virtual reality that's coming, metaphors, it's in the beginning stages right now. Take about five to ten years to finish it. That's the goal, okay? <coughs> Millions of dollars have been set aside to create this, this virtual reality. So again, what the goal is, is to take you out of the garden and to move you into, to focus on artificial intelligence. Okay? When you study... <coughs> Mark Zuckerberg's uh, metaverse, the advertisement. There's the tiger and the water buffalo. Now, I didn't have time today to go and find that, capture that, and bring it into the PowerPoint. But you'll see it in a commercial. When it, when it comes up, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a really strange. Sister Christina said the other day, it came on, she goes, that's really weird. Okay? And it is. What's going on there? 
It's the advertisement for Metaverse. And you've got this tiger and water buffalo. And the tiger's chewing on the neck of the water buffalo. Okay? That is the symbol of Metaverse. What does that mean? Somebody's taken the time and broke that down, that advertisement down. And the tiger on the neck of the water buffalo chewing on it is a symbol of Zoroasterism. Now, what is Zoroasterism? We're not much, we don't know much about it, but probably Cyrus, King Cyrus, was a Zoroasterist, uh, the Persian Empire. This is a very pagan religion, a very well-known religion in ancient days. They had two gods. One god was a good god. There was another god, a second god. He was known as the bad god, the god of darkness that creates confusion for mankind. And that God, the bad God, which we know biblically is not a God at all. He's a devil. Not, he's not equal to God. But that lion or that tiger chewing on the back of the water buffalo is a symbol of Zoroasterism. And it's a symbol of the devil. Strange, and he's over there chewing on the back of that water buffalo. Then you'll see the advertisement changes. He's no longer chewing on the back of the water buffalo, but he's stroking it. And so what he's saying is, if you come and be my friend, I won't hurt you. What, he's, what they're doing is they're mimicking that they're your friend, but they're really not. Because in their own advertisement, they are showing that their plan is to destroy. They're like the God that they serve. The God of darkness that creates confusion. But if you'll come and join us, when you join us, we'll be your friend. And so you see the tiger stroking the water buffalo. Okay? And if you look really careful at that water buffalo, it's got one eye. And that eye looks like the eye of Horus. Now, for those of you who don't know what the eye of Horus is, that's called the all-seeing eye. In the back of your dollar bill, you see a pyramid, and there's an eye on the top of that. That's the all-seeing eye of the Illuminati. It is a, it is a world, uh, world government type setup, okay, the Illuminati. And a symbol of the Illuminati is that eye of Horus or the all-seeing eye. It's the eye of Satan. It's the eye of Lucifer. So that the water buffalo then is, is saying, we are the all-seeing one. Liken itself to the fallen Lucifer and the Illuminati. Okay? If you keep watching that advertisement at the end, you'll see this bird fly up in the air. And if you look carefully, you'll see a hexagon in the background. That wasn't put there by accident. That was planned. So then their symbol is the all-seeing eye of Lucifer. The symbol is if you become our friend. No, it's not true. They're only pretending to be your friend if you join in with it. Okay? When you watch Mark Zuckerberg's presentation on Metaverse, he talks a lot about connectivity. He talks a lot about um, economy. So the driving factor of Metaverse is economy. <coughs> okay? And we're going to get into that. It's very, very interesting. When we look at this technology, um, and then you look at the Bible, and you go, wow. We're an advanced civilization. And we're so smart as human beings. You know, and this Bible is outdated and it's archaic and, and it, it, just, it just hasn't caught up with the times. I'm going to show you tonight that God already predicted He was ahead of everybody. And, and in His Bible, He talks about meta before it ever comes. So when the devil comes to you young people and say, 
uh, you know, go for this new technology. It's, it's real, we're real smart and the Bible's outdated and it doesn't give us relevance today. Let me tell you something. God is ahead of all of them. Right? Revelation 1.19 says this. <coughs> brother, could you get my glasses out of there? I'm going to let Brother Timothy read this, okay? Help me tonight with reading. Thanks, brother. Revelation 1, 19, I'll read that, Brother Timothy, if you'll get Revelation 4 and 1. The word meta in the Greek is actually in your Bible. So that God is saying all the way back 2,000 years ago or so that there's coming a meta. Meta's coming. So your outdated, archaic Bible God's ahead of them. And he's warning against the avatars. He's warning against the metaverse. Because ultimately, what's going to happen is the Antichrist is going to use this in his Antichrist kingdom. And God is warning the church that it's coming. So that he actually uses the Greek word that Zuckerberg uses for metaverse. Okay? Remember, meta is a Greek word. It's in your Bible. So Revelation 1, 19. It says this. The Lord says, write thee the things which thou hast seen. <coughs> and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter. Companion Bible that I have, um, King James Version, Companion Bible. Make sure it's been a long time. This Bible is phenomenal. Actually breaks down the Greek words for you right in the text. It's one of my favorite study Bibles that I have. Okay. <coughs> so the word, write the things which thou hast seen, the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Right here in the Greek text is laid out concerning this word. And it literally is when it says hereafter, the word hereafter is meta. Wow. So what God is saying, he speaks to the church. And he says, after he speaks to the church, he said, I'm going to talk to you about meta. I'm going to talk to you about what's coming hereafter. I'm going to tell you about the Antichrist kingdom. So that metaverse is going to be used by the Antichrist. It's going to be used by the enemy to get you out of a reality. To disconnect you from God. To disconnect you from the church. To disconnect you from yourself. The reality of yourself. So that ultimately you will download your soul into metaverse. Instead of your soul being saved. Having given it to God. That's the enemy's plan. Is that you become so immersed in this virtual reality that you literally lose your soul in that metaverse. And you'll never come out. Because you'll be so distracted by another reality. Your soul will be so inundated by it that you're literally downloading your soul into a non-reality. And that's why God is warning. He's talking about an antichrist kingdom. The things that shall be hereafter. Meta. Amen, amen. 
Revelation 4 1, brother, please. Read. Amen. <coughs> After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. Which must be hereafter. The Greek word right here in the text, I believe it's Bollinger, <coughs> says, the word hereafter is meta. Amen. Again. So God is showing you what's coming. Amen. It's meta. Amen. It's coming. Amen. Okay. Revelation 17, 12. Brother Timothy, I'll read that for you. And then I'm going to read in the appendix. This is appendix 104 concerning meta. Brother Reed, please. Okay, verse 17, 12. Amen. <coughs> and, the ten, and the beast that was, excuse me, verse 12. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. With who? With the beast. The word with the beast, or the word with, Connected to the beast is meta. Wow. Amen. This what it in the appendix, I believe this is Bullinger. He says this, meta denotes association and companionship with. Wow. Amen. <laughs> okay. So, in company with, it refers especially to mental disposition. Wow, wow. Amen. What's going on in the imagination, the imaginary world that you go into, being a companion with that. Again, he says, meta is connected with what? The disposition of what? Your mental disposition so when you go into that imaginary world it's affecting your imagination your mental disposition and you're entering to an accompany you're accompanying with them you're in association with them and so that's the word that's used in Revelation 17 and verse 12 so then meta is connected to the woman that rides upon the scarlet colored beast who is that woman that rides upon the scarlet colored beast? Yeah, I believe it's the false church system. Amen. Okay? And then we've taught that to you before and as to why we believe that. Amen. There is a big push right now from the makers of Metaverse, Facebook, to really get the churches on board into this virtual reality. And Revelation 17 talks about this harlot that's going to ride about on the back of the scarlet colored beast. And in your Bible, women always speak of prophetically of two. A woman is the, uh, speaks typically of the bride, the virgin, the bride. And the harlot speaks of a false church system in your Bible. A woman is always a religious system. Okay? So what we see here is that the church is going to join into Meta. They're going to be a part of Meta. And I am not kidding you. There is a major push right now from Metaverse to get the churches involved into this uh, virtual reality. You hear what I'm telling you? Now, if I understand the Bible correctly, God is showing you that this woman is going to be connected Meta. She's going to be involved with this. Okay. Now, I'll answer the question later on. Could a legitimate church profit by using it? Okay. Again, it's technology. It's not immoral. But I'm saying, ultimately, God is telling you that there's going to be a meta with the harlot. Amen, amen, amen. Revelation 18 and verse 3. Amen. Revelation 18 talks about economic power. Again, Zuckerberg talks a lot about uh, 
<coughs> economy, economics, etc. So, Brother Timothy, please read 18 and 3. 18 verse 3 of Revelation. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. The word with there in that passage connected to the economic system that's going to be judged by God, the word that's used there with is meta. Wow, amen. Amen, amen. Okay? So when you listen to him talk, he talks about connectivity. He talks about creating. He talks about imagine. He talks about your presence being there. These, these words that he uses are something you've got to hear. Because basically he's saying, this is going to become God. It's going to be an image to the beast. And the very words, meta, are connected with hereafter, what's coming in the future, Antichrist kingdom, harlot system, economic system, connected with meta. Okay? Those are the few verses. Uh, Revelation 9, verse 20. Brother, read that, please. Yes, sir. Revelation 9, verse 20. Okay, read. <laughs> Hallelujah. Revelation 9, verse 20. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands. Works of their hands. And they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Amen. Okay. So anyway, biblically, God was ahead of the game. Amen. Amen. Biblically... God is actually using the word that they're using yeah. for this virtual reality. Amen. Uh, and the, the Antichrist is going to use it. Amen? Amen. Now, the question is, what's the agenda? Is it just a money maker? Is that why they're creating it? Or is it, I'm asking the question, is it about control? Is it about tracking you? Amen? Big thing that they, Zuckerberg talks about in his presentation is um, how you're going to make transactions in that virtual reality. Okay? Because he said you're actually going to be able to go in there, your avatar, which represents you, you're going to be able to go in there and make transactions, buy and sell, right there in that. Yeah, right. And the question he, he, he raises is how, though, can that be done securely? Okay, how can your privacy be maintained as far as, you know, you're buying your transactions in that virtual reality? They already have the answer. Now, you may not have heard about this, but, you know, I hear these terms from time to time. NFT. NFT, non-fungible tokens. Don't know a whole lot about it, but evidently NFT is a secure process by which you can make transactions and they're going to use the NFT as the secure process to buy and sell in Metaverse. Wow. And they're going to use QR codes. Oh, wow. Wow. Now, I wish I had time. Man, I was really up against it just trying to get this together. But if you'll notice, there's this little square Okay, it's called a QR code. If you don't know what that is, you got, you got technology right now with you. You can go online right now and look up a QR code. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, okay? Yes. You can scan those codes and you can make transactions and all kinds of... But if you look at it very carefully, the NFT which secures your uh, information, secures your ability to make transactions in that metaverse is going to be connected with QR, code, QR codes. And when you look at it, there's three dots in that QR code. Not four dots, but three dots. 
And so those three dots, most likely, I, haven't, I don't know. I think Tim has been able to break the code. I haven't been able to break the code. But I think he just in, in passing, he told me the other day that he was able to break the, the QR code. I don't know. But I'm, I'm assuming now that those three dots represent 666. So that in that metaverse, which is connected to the harlot on the back of the beast, and is connected to the economic Babylon in the beast, that are connected to the metaverse, they will use the NFT, the non-fungible tokens, to secure your ability to do that transaction and use QR codes 666 to make the transactions right there in the metaverse. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Some, you see, I preach to smart people. I preach to people that are on top of technology. I mean, you know what's coming, you know? And I don't want you to respond, but when you first heard about this virtual reality and the ability to game with it, you know, and not just from the outside game with your friends, but actually go into the game itself and interact with your friends as avatars in that game, you know, in a 3D type of setup so that you're not outside of the game, you're actually in the game. And one of those games that are being made right now for Metaverse is called the Kingdom Age. And you get to go into that Kingdom Age game and you get to literally participate in that virtual reality called the Kingdom Age. And then, man, that's really neat. You know, now I don't have to just sit on this little headset and talk to my friends, you know, through the Internet and game that way, I actually get to see them. I get to see their avatar, and they get to see my avatar, my representation of me, and we get to interact. And I mean, we're going to have a good old time because now we're not just controlling somebody, shooting somebody. We shoot. We get to cut people's heads off. <laughs> you with me? Hey, man, I can't wait for this technology. If you look at it, you go, wow, that's really neat. That's pretty amazing that they can do that. You know? You get your families on the other side of the United States and y'all get together in that metaverse. There y'all are all together as a family. Well, that sounds so good, doesn't it? You get to be there with your family in that virtual reality. Hmm. Or watch... You know, one of the things he talked about, too, in that metaverse is that <coughs> education. <coughs> okay? So you can actually go into that metaverse and learn how to do surgery. So if you're going to be a doctor or whatever, a nurse, and you don't even just have to take the course now, you can actually go into the metaverse, and you can actually be involved in the actual surgical process. You know? and it, I mean, that, that doesn't sound bad to me. That doesn't sound bad to me. That sounds pretty interesting. That you could get hands-on working in education right there. Okay? It's there. That's not a bad deal to me, right? But you look at all of that and you go, wow, man, look at technology. This is going to be so fun. It's going to be so awesome. When you first look at it, still you start looking at it in depth. And you find out what an avatar is. And you find out that Meta is connected with the harlot and is connected with an economic power that God's going to judge in the last days. It's connected to the beast system. So it could be used for some good things. But right here, the transaction process of buying and selling is NFT and QR codes, which is connected to the mark of the beast. At least everything I'm hearing I don't know. I'm not an expert on QR codes, but everybody, everything that I'm hearing connects it to 666. <coughs> Revelation 13, 16 through 18. Talks about, and we already read Revelation 9, 20, um, 
about these beasts and buying and selling. So, Brother Timothy, please read Revelation 13, 16 through 18. Revelation 13, 16 through 18. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that hath the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. So buying and selling will be, you have to have the mark, what's called the mark of the beast, 666, to be able to buy and sell. Okay? It's been in uh, barcodes, everything you buy in the store, every barcode has 666 already on it. Amen. Okay? Amen. Didn't stop us from going to the grocery store and buying groceries. But the point is you need to be informed about that economic system Anti beast, beast system, antichrist system that's coming that's going, has going to work in that metaverse, okay? Everybody understand that? Amen. Okay. Isaiah 19, verse 1, I'm going to read that to you. In order for the metaverse to work, hey, another thing too, you get to work out in metaverse. Hey. You get to put on your little glasses and you know, work you out. Man, sign me up. <laughs> Isaiah 9. Man, I had, I'm looking forward to being able to work out again. God willing. So Isaiah 19, verse 1. <coughs> What are they doing? Zuckerberg is partnering with people, creators, uh, to develop this technology. And ultimately, again, Satan is the prince of the power of the air. So he's right in the middle of this. Okay, amen. Okay, watch. Isaiah 19.1. The burden of Egypt, behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence and the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. Amen. Now why would God say, we say there in 19, that he's the rider on the cloud and he's coming and when he does, as he rides on the cloud, he's going to defeat the idols. Okay? Because Baal is is known as the rider on the cloud. And how many of y'all on your phone right now have the cloud? I have the cloud. And I don't worship Baal. You have the cloud. You're storing stuff in the cloud right now. And you don't worship Baal. But the point is there's coming a time when Baal, Microsoft, is connected to Metaverse by the cloud. And when the Lord comes back, he's the true one that rides upon the cloud. And he's going to defeat the idols of the metaverse. He's going to defeat Baal, the counterfeit rider on the cloud. Amen. Amen. So, interesting, isn't it? Another thing, this could never have worked without 5G. 5G net technology is necessary for this to work. Okay? And you have it. It's just going up everywhere, right? 5G technology. Am I right, Ryan? You're my tech guy. Okay? It's the truth. It has to be fast for it to be able to operate. And another thing, they have to have the ability to pay to power it. What's going to be, what, what powers it? Got to have a lot of power. So Bill Gates, Microsoft, Bill Gates is supporting or backing uh, iron, uh, an iron battery process. You know, lithium batteries have a time frame, how long they'll last. But iron lasts longer. 
So if you go on and look at ESS batteries, you'll find that Bill Gates is behind it. He's supporting it. And that is what is believed is going to be powering the metaverse in the future. So all these players in place right now to bring this about. Now, question, who owns this metaverse? Who's involved with this metaverse? What's their agenda? Okay? They're creating an idol, an imaginary world, an image. Revelation 12 and 9. Brother Timothy, please read that for me. Hallelujah. Revelation 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So there's coming a time that the enemy, the devil, is going to be cast out of that universe. So he wants to create a virtual universe when he's cast out that he can operate in. Okay? The Bible is very clear about what's going to happen. Now, this imaginary world that people will go into, the Bible says this in 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, casting down imaginations and every high thing. What is a high thing? It's a demonic spirit. It's an avatar. Amen. God says the avatars, these demonic spirits, these fallen ones, these high ones are to be cast down. Amen. When we look at the passage, what we see here is demonic powers working with the images, the imaginations, the avatars, etc. You with me? We are supposed to be casting them down. We're not supposed to be entering into the imaginary world. We're supposed to cast those images down because those spirits, when you let your imagination run wild, those spirits are going to be involved in your imagination. Okay? So that you'll disconnect from God ultimately. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You talk about a major distraction from God. A major distraction from reality. Amen. So do you come to church, you're, you're so caught up, you're so, so downloaded, <laughs> you come to church and you're disconnected. And the enemy loves that. Because we talked about it this morning, he comes sweeping down that well-trodden, beaten path of the world. And he works to capture the Word of God out of your heart. Okay? Amen. I'm going to say this to you. I'm not, I'm not making a mandate. I'm just going to say this to you. People, not even in the church, don't do a lot of gaming. They don't do a lot of gaming. Because it messes, it alters your mind. It takes you to another reality. Can you imagine what a metaverse is going to be like when you're actually in that game itself? Man, this is serious stuff. That's why. Are you there? And you wonder why your young people are not even there? Because they sit in front of the games constantly. Now they're going to be in the game. I'm sounding a trumpet as your pastor. Amen. And anything the enemy can use to alter your reality, he's going to do it. One individual is very intelligent. Uh, Dr. Gene Kim, I think is his name. He talked a lot about metaverse. And... He said, I used to game. He's a Chinese, I believe he's Chinese. He said, I used to do a lot of gaming. He said, but I got weird. He said, I couldn't even relate to people. He said, I got this 
just weird, strange. And then I got rid of the gaming, you know, and I started being able to relate to people. I'm telling you, I'm sounding an alarm. Not just to young people. Now, come on. I know young people are going to play. I'm not dumb. I've been around a long time. I can say that now. So I get up here and I can mandate that, but I know it's not. I know you're still going to do it. I've been around a long time. I used to think that when I got up and, and I felt led of God to say something, that it was going to stick in the house, and that's the way it would be. But I've learned differently now. You know, used to say, "Y'all don't know Facebook. That's a waste of time." I have found that to be a waste of time. So I don't say that anymore. But I need to make you aware of the dangers of it. Because it's not FaceTime now. It's meta. Going beyond, they've got a plan. Okay? They call it connection, but it's not. It's, I believe it's about control. It's about altering your state of conscience. About changing your reality. About disconnecting you from you and God and who you are. So that you will, as your own God, create your own identity. And be who you want to be in that world that's not real. God created a real world. With real air. With, with real... You know, real, I, that's what God created. Not some kind of fake world. But remember, the tiger on the back. Come and join us and we'll be your friend. Okay? So I'm not going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to stand up here and be dumb enough to mandate stuff like that. And I'm not going to mandate that you don't game. But I'm going to tell you that if you do, you're paying a price. Okay, and I know young people, they're going to gain. They are. But you're paying a price. Now, can I talk to the men in the house? Can I talk to the men in the house? You're a man and you're still gaming. Maybe you ought to get a job. I mean, really? Sorry. But that's why some of you are still connected to people that have tried to destroy the kingdom of God. Because your connectivity, you open that portal, that door to people that hate God and hate the church and you're still involved with them through gaming. I'm setting an alarm. Bishop Osborne said this, and I made mention of it this morning. If you're going to live for God, you got to send the crowd away. Because if you don't send that ungodly crowd away, you will join them. There's no way you can say, I'm strong, Pastor. They won't influence me. They already have. You come to church and you're affected by that so-called connectivity of people. You say, well, they're away from me. Send the crowd away. So through gaming, it's very dangerous. And I'm not saying it's all bad. Some of it could be good. It could be beneficial. But my question is this. You're a grown man or a grown woman. Can, can you see Sister Sonia over there spending six, seven hours gaming? I don't know. I better ask. <laughs> I mean, no, really, 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 really. And our kids are spacing, Tim. And you try to teach them every day. And I guarantee your challenge is gaming. They're spacing, man. They're already in another world. They're totally disconnected. And you're trying to teach them, educate them, and they're gaming. 
while you're doing it. Yeah, amen. Same thing in the church. That's why I can stand up and preach. And they're there, but they're not there. Okay? And again, I'm not mandating anything. It's not going to do any good. But you have to ask yourself, is it worth the, worth the price that you're paying? Oh, Pastor, you know, the games is really not that big a deal. I just want to be connected. To my friends. You're known by the company you keep, honey child, juicy fruit, sugar plum. And you'll never be able to escape that. Never. Do you understand? Okay, strong word. It's a dopamine trip, man. And that's why the guy, the guy, that was involved in literally making Facebook says don't do it. He says don't do it. But church is smarter. We know better. We do what we want to do. I'm not accusing anybody of anything, but I want to tell you something. I've been in this for a little while and I discern strange spirits. And I'm going to say something's going to blow your mind. I can discern a spirit that used to be here when it walks back in. And y'all are thinking, oh, he, he don't know. He don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah that's what you think. But, but you see, that discernment, and I'm not beating nobody up. I'm just telling you, man. So that gaming and then this virtual reality, this metaverse is going to connect you with the wrong crowd. Amen. The wrong kind of people, man. Amen. Could cost you your soul. Because you've downloaded yourself into that device. You've downloaded yourself into that game. Okay? So the Word of God goes forth. And it's not getting in here. Right, right, right. Not getting in the, the soul. Because the soul has been downloaded somewhere else. I believe what the bishop preached. Send the, send the crowd away. Because if you don't, you're going to join them. Eventually you will. Okay. So you can call me. You know, controlling and all of that, whatever. All of you people who call me a control freak, where are you today? What's your life about today? Are you living for God? Are you on fire? I didn't take nothing away from you today. I left it with you. But you've got to make the choices. Okay, watch, 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 watch. You, know, you sit, we can sit, we play that game, this altered reality, you know. Metaverse comes, now we're in it. And if we come to church and we're completely disconnected now, what's going to happen then? There's no way I'm going to be able to reach you. God's not going to be able to reach you because you're going to be in a different world. See? And <coughs> it's like drugs. Drugs, pharmakia, the Greek word, sorcery. In the book of Revelation, the Greek word is pharmakia, drugs, addictions. And that dopamine addiction, man, well, you feel so good and it releases that dopamine. It's like a drug effect, right? You know? It's an imaginary world of avatars and fallen ones and connected with the harlot and connected with the Babylonian system and Baal, etc., the cloud, all of that, taking you to a place of distraction away from God. We're distracted enough. And I'm not telling you if 
you know, when Metaverse comes that I'll never put the glasses on. I'm not going to put myself in that box, but I highly doubt if I will. Okay. But say, casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, you got to cast those spirits down, not join them. You got to cast those spirits down, not make yourself one of them. Imagine, no. That's to be cast down. Because my, I'm going to talk to you as a human being. My imagination, if I just let it go, is always going to go the wrong direction. And so will yours. And that the enemy will get a hold of that imagination that's coming from your heart. And I'm going to tell you again, create a logic and a reality that only you work in. Only you understand because you've created an avatar. The Tower of Babel. In Genesis 11, Babylonian system, all the way back to the book of Genesis, a Babylonian system is any system, economic, religious, government, That leaves God out. Any system. That's Babylon. Amen? Amen. (coughs) Genesis 11, 4. If you listen to Mark Zuckerberg about metaverse, he talks about becoming one. We're going to become one, you know. We're going to connect with each other. But what did God say in Genesis 11, 4 through 6? I love it. Okay, so maybe some of you young ladies right now, you like to game. It's probably not a whole lot of young ladies that like to game, but maybe some of you do. But you will get this tape when you get married, and you will play it in your house day and night. Praise God. Amen. When your husband is sitting there hour after hour after hour after hour. Or your kids are sitting there hour after hour after hour after hour connecting with who knows who. You know what I mean? You ever noticed? You walk by them. Walk by them. You're, You're the wife, right? The husband's playing. You could walk by him naked. It's bad, man. Okay. I mean, think about it, though. That virtual reality, that metaverse, it'll do away with the need of a family. You won't need to have a real family because you can go into metaverse and you can have the woman of your dreams in metaverse. Yeah, right. Amen. Or you can have the man of your dreams in metaverse. Why do you need the headache of marriage? No, I mean, you're looking at me like I'm some kind of weirdo. But I know what I'm preaching is the truth. You won't need a wife anymore. You won't need a husband anymore. Just wait. You can get all, everything you want in a metaverse. Won't need children because you have little bambinos running around in the metaverse. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I'm telling you, man. Yeah. Amen. It's going to break down everything. 
It's going to break down the family. You understand? Okay. Are y'all all right out there? You better breathe. You're going to die. So what did God say in Genesis 11? The Tower of Babel, and that's not the actual Tower of Babel, but that's a tower, right? <coughs> amen. Looks like what it might have looked like. Right, amen. Hallelujah. Genesis 11, 4 through 6, And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower amen. which the children of men builded. <laughs> and the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. You know, just if you want to, if you got time, take time, listen to Mark Zuckerberg talking about how we're all be gonna be one in this metaverse. It's the works of men's hands. It's the image of the beast. It's part of a, a beast kingdom. Meta. Lord said, Lord said, Behold the people's one, they have all one language. And this they began to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Amen. <coughs> In closing tonight, man, real timely. Thank God. What is the intention of Metaverse? Question, will it become a distraction from reality, from God, from eternity? Is it, will it be set up for control and tracking? Brothers and sisters, I'm a, I'm a Christian pastor but when you study metaverse, there are people who aren't Christians who worship the earth that are preaching harder against metaverse than Christian pastors are. They worship Gaia, Mother Earth. And they will tell you they believe what the main agenda of metaverse is control and tracking. <laughs> yeah, <they're> crazy. <laughs> Disconnecting from the real world and who you are. Man, come on, y'all. Is that what we want? Do we want more space cadets? Hello, space cadets? Help us, God. And y'all are strong, and you love God. And this church is strong. doesn't have a lot of people, but it's strong. And you're strong. You hear me? But God wants to put you in a zone. He wants to turn you into a zombie up here. Disconnect with reality. When's the last time you ever sat down and had a meaningful conversation with each other. Without some gadget in your hand. <coughs> Is it deep conversation? Do your children have the capability of looking you in the eyeballs? Or are they always looking down? I'm talking to you. When's the last time they ever came to church and they heard the pastor preaching that God was moving and <laughs> they got involved with it? But that's my boy. I love my boy. You're losing him. You're losing them. I'm telling you, man. 
you don't see it. This book is not outdated. The Word of God is not outdated. God is ahead of this game. He in this Bible has warned about what it is, okay? It blows my mind, man. This blows my mind. <coughs> We're raising a generation of mutes. Disconnected robots. All that's whole, that's the life of a human being. Hallelujah. I tell you what you do, and I'm about done. Somebody comes up to you and wants to borrow money from you, or they want money, right? They say, I need money. Can you give me money? Okay. And they look like they're in really bad shape. Right? They're about to starve to death. Ask them one question. Just say, hey, can I see your cell phone? <laughs> uh, they're going to pull out a $1,000 cell phone and they need you to give them buy a hamburger. All you need to do is ask them that one question. They start talking about how poor they are. You're so poor. You got a thousand dollar cell phone in your hand. You're not poor. I'm on. I'm on. I'm gonna keep my tongue clean, clean tonight. Right? I say. So they pull that thousand dollar cell phone out. Right? Say, I'm not giving you anything. You got a thousand dollar cell phone right in your pocket. They find a way. To make sure they had that cell phone. Amen? You'll find out real quick, Brother Jared, where they are. So, who owns Metaverse? What is the agenda? Is there an agenda? You think these people, like Zuckerberg and Bill Gates, these so-called elites have good intention. They're courting the church real strong right now on this. So the question is, who owns Metaverse and what is the agenda? Are you going to download your soul into a Metaverse avatar, a digital version of yourself? Create your own identity means make yourself God. Then when you go into that world, there, there's no meaning to life. Because there is no life without God. And when you go through the book of Revelation, God over and over and talks about, you know, you have to overcome. If you want life, you have to overcome. Life is in God. It's not in a game. Life is in God, not in a, a virtual reality. Life is in God, not in technology. And I'm not against technology. But you're never going to find life in it. God tells you that over and over in the book of Revelation. And the only time he connects life to the beast is when it says they shall give life to the image of the beast. Is an avatar. Altered. Or what is it? AI? Artificial intelligence. No life outside of God. And that's what they're creating. They're creating a world, and they talk about you can go in there and your presence will be there. This life that you will create is not life at all. 
so no meaning in life. Technology is not moral or immoral, <coughs> but how it's used. Okay, so these are just some questions that I had that I put down. And I'm telling you, ultimately, I'm not against technology. I'm not. But, again, repeat, 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 repeat. Is it my master or is it my servant? And I don't care what it is. If it's my master, it's an idol. So, again, technology is not moral or immoral, but how I choose. It's a, is it a master or servant? Could be used for good and evil. No need for a family. I talked about that. You know, no need for a family because you can create one. Okay? And that interaction is, is supposed to be so real even though it's not. I mean, you can actually handle things, touch things with your avatar. It's mind-boggling. So you don't need a family anymore. You know, so we'll control you. We'll we'll run a depopulation effort. We'll try to dwindle the population of the earth down through a planned process, and we'll get the rest of them in our own virtual reality that we create and that we control and that we censor. And people are just like zombies. They have been prepared to walk right into it. Question, can it be used to spread the gospel? Time will tell. But given the imagination of fallen man and Lucifer, remember Illuminati? Its goal will end up sinister <clears throat> as shown in the Antichrist kingdom so I don't know ultimately what can be good out of it I'm not against technology but boy it's I tell you it's got some sinister roots to it okay and it's all packaged in working you know virtual reality of work and, and working out and gaming and social interaction and if you want to go to Rome, you go to Rome. And you find out how they built Rome. And if you can't go to a rock concert, you know you really physically can't be there, you can send your avatar. And your avatar is at the rock concert. And your friend's at the rock concert, but you sent your avatar to be with your friend at a rock concert. You're really not there, but you are in that virtual reality. Hallelujah, y'all. This is what's, this is, man, this is here. And this is what's being prepared. So, isn't God good? And this Bible right here is not outdated. God is not outdated. He's ahead, he, listen, he's ahead of their game. He called it by name. The very Greek word that they're using is in your Bible. And it's connected to the future kingdom of the beast. You know? And so here we are in this technological age. And I preach right now that people are so disconnected from reality. Not you. But maybe you. Amen? Conditioned, brainwashed to think that this Bible is outdated. That when we come to church, it's going to be all boring. And man, I want to get out there and live. No, he said it's death. Go for pleasures, you're dead while you live. You're not a living, you're dying. God's the only one that can give you life. Amen. So may the Lord bless you.
real good. I had a lot more that I want to share with you, but I'm out of time. So, would you stand? Oh, God. We thank you today for your great mercy and grace. Lord, that our minds will be purified and our hearts will be purified and we would live in the reality that you create, the reality of your word, the reality of your presence, not giving ourselves to imaginations, imaginary worlds, God, that disconnect us from you, from the church, from each other, that put us in an altered state of consciousness, that put us locked in our own logic, a reality that we create for ourselves. But Lord God, let us live by the life and the light that you have put in us. Let us find our joy and our satisfaction in you, God. Protect us, Lord. We thank you for sounding the trumpet tonight before us. We give you all praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name. One quick statement. This colossal statue Daniel saw And that's the way men looked at it. Man, he saw, wow. <coughs> Head of gold, <coughs> chest and arms of silver, abdomen, thighs of brass, legs of iron, and at the feet, iron mingled with clay. The mingling of iron and clay. Don't. Do we see possibly the mingling of iron and clay, man, and AI, artificial intelligence? God is coming back. He's going to smite that image at the feet. And he's going to dissipate the kingdoms of men, and they're going to blow away, and God's going to set up his real kingdom. <laughs> 